Hello, I'm Rebecca Lewington. Welcome to our podcast. The IT industry is gearing up to make the transition to a new mainstream memory standard, DDR5, which is replacing, you guessed it, DDR4. The question is why? What was wrong with DDR4? You may have heard that DDR5 is the first generation specifically designed to address the needs of data centers. What does that mean? I asked Brian Drake, who's focused on enabling DDR5 solutions for our hyperscale customers to help me answer these piercing questions. Brian, thanks much for joining me. Yeah, thanks for having me, Rebecca. You're very welcome. So first, tell us a bit about yourself. What's your background and what's your current role? So a little bit about me is, is my current role is I'm a business development manager uh, within the compute networking business unit at Micron. Um, if we go back to when I first started in DRAM, uh, I started at Infineon Technologies, which later became Kimanda, and, and I was a test program engineer uh, for five to six years. Uh, in early 2009, I had the luxury of being able to join Micron, and I joined uh, the DRAM product engineering team, uh, where I spent about six years. And, and then I made the leap to CMBU, um, Compute Network Business Unit, um, where I first started as a customer program manager. And eventually it kind of transitioned into a business development role as well. Got it. So you've been around DRAM a while. So what, what made you leave a proper job in engineering and move to the, the dark side of marketing? You know, it, it's always a hard choice. Um, it, it's always hard making change. Um, but, you know, as, as I spent my time in engineering, I always kind of saw the opportunity to try to maybe help close a gap between our customers and, and our internal teams at Micron from an engineering perspective. Um, with my background in DRAM, you know, I, I always had the hope of how can I help close issues quicker at customers? Or if I can't, how do I ask the right questions and take that back to the internal teams in the hopes of just getting the answers more, more quickly? Um, and that's really how I started in the customer program management perspective. Um, and, you know, as time, has gone on, it's transitioned into more business development and how do you help enable new technologies, enable DDR5 and you know many other things beyond just DDR5. A perfectly good excuse, well done. <laughs> so why new generation, why DDR5? So when, when we look at the, the way the data is being generated in the world today, I mean, data is doubling every, every two years. Um, this data could, hold the answer to some of the world's most piercing problems. And, and hopefully it does. And hopefully, you know, we, we are able to find these solutions. Um, but as this, this data continues to double, uh, we need to make sure we have the appropriate compute resources and also the memory bandwidth to be able to feed into those compute resources. Um, that's the key to being able to transform all this data, data into insight. Um, and what we're seeing with DDR4 is it's reached its maximum bandwidth of 3,200 megatransfers per second. And, and with DDR5, it will more likely than double the available bandwidth we're able to provide to um, computing the compute power. Um, you know, just, just the data rates alone isn't, isn't where DDR5 stops. Just the, the architecture changes that are being introduced with DDR5 um, makes, um, if you compare like frequencies or like data rates, uh, DDR5 would, would even be more, more performant at the same data rate. Um, you know, in conversations, you might generally hear this referred to as effective bandwidth. Um, but these bandwidth and performance increases are, are critical as CPU core counts continue to increase. Right. You might say that like a car, there's more to, more to the performance of a car than just the top speed of the thing. But let's talk about that for a minute. Where does that extra bandwidth come from? So good question. Um, there, there's many features on DDR5 that, that help improve the effective bandwidth. We're not gonna touch on all of them. We'll, we'll touch on more of the basics and the more obvious ones here today. Um, the most obvious of course is the, the increased um, the data rates. As I mentioned before, the, the data rates will be 2X or potentially even higher as DDR5 continues to evolve. Um, bank groups and banks are doubled on DDR5. Um, bank groups themselves increase from four to eight, um, while banks per bank group um, remains at four. So our, our total banks will increase from 16 to 32. So you're going to, have to help me out here. What's a bank? Very, very good question. Um, so when we think about banks and bank groups, 
Um, this is basically how the memory space is partitioned to, to store the data in, in the DRAM, in the array of the DRAM. Um, banks within the bank group actually share circuitry like local I.O. or array blocks and stamps. So anytime that you access a bank within the bank group, um, you have the penalty of, of potentially longer timing constraints. The reason these banks are, are or, or the way, the reason the DRAM is designed this way is that, you know, having shared resources allows you to optimize your die size and, and potentially power, but it does introduce these additional timing constraints. And so, you know, in the, di in the ideal scenario with DDR4 to DDR5, and we're, we're doubling our bank groups. So in the ideal scenario, you're, you're alternating your DRAM accesses across these different bank groups so you're not penalized by these um, longer I.O. timings within the same, or these longer timing constraints within the same bank group. Oh, interesting. So you're sort of hiding the overhead by flipping between different bank groups. Correct. So what else? Um, and, and, you know, just one more comment on that, just doubling the banks themselves um, allows you to have open, open rows or open pages on the DRAM. So the more of these you have open, and if you're, you're more statistically likely to be able to need data from an open row. So you're also able to hide overhead that way if you don't have to open and close. Oh. Row. It's like having two documents open at once and looking between the two. Right. So what else, what else gives you more bandwidth? So uh, an additional feature on DDR5 is burst length. The burst length is doubled from eight on DDR4 to 16 on DDR5. Um, this is associated with how many bits are transferred or prefetched from the array with each access. Uh, a very simple way uh, of thinking about this is that on DDR4, if you were to issue a read command, you would get eight bits back per IO. On DDR5, you, you would get 16 bits back, so double the bits. Um, doubling the bits per command and limiting exposure, this, this again helps limit the exposure to the internal IO timing constraints within the same bank or bank group in the DRAM. So th this is a bit beneficial for command address and, and data bus efficiency. And I should have mentioned a little bit about this earlier, but when I'm talking about data bus efficiency, um, when I compare like data rates of DDR5 or DDR4-3200, at that same data rate, if it's more efficient, you can continue to get more, more data, but at the same quarter clock frequency. Right, got it. Um, and so there's something about refresh rates too, I think. Absolutely. So DDR5 offers uh, improved refresh schemes. Um, so refresh um, is required by the DRAM at a given interval to ensure proper charge is, is stored or, or maintained in the DRAM. Um, but what DDR5 does is it's added this new feature, um, optional to use. Uh, I suspect most will because it does offer a performance gain, uh, but it's called same bank refresh. And what this does is you have your four banks per bank group, and you can choose to refresh one bank per bank group um, across it, or in the in the DR5. Uh, and what this does is it allows you to leave the other three in the bank group to continue um, normal operations, write, read, um, whatever the controller needs to do. Uh, on DDR4, the entire rank would be locked out for a refresh. So you couldn't you couldn't do any additional commands. So th this will be a big performance add for, for DDR5. Clever. And um, of course, you're also just running electrical circuits at a higher frequency, which makes signal integrity more and more difficult. Are there some things that we've done to keep those bits intact, so to speak? Correct. So I think the feature you're alluding to is the uh, decision feedback equalization. It is also built into DDR5. Um, it's a feature I'm much less familiar with, so I'm not going to let you ask too many questions on it, but if, if you need more, I know where to find the right people. Um, but essentially what this does is, as we continue to go to higher and higher data rates, the, the data I or the, the valid data window on the channel before the DRAM continues to, to shrink or, or potentially even close. Uh, you probably hear the term a closed data I fairly often um, when talking to um, maybe DRAM engineers. But what, but what this feature does is it allows the DRAM, internal to the DRAM, uh, it's able to correct this data I closing and able to open the data I back up internal oh. to the DRAM. 
Oh, oh got it. So th this is important as you continue to go to these higher data rates and you see increased noise or increased increased ringing or reflections on the channel. It's important that the DRAM is able to open this data eye back up. Gotcha. That's actually the best explanation of that I've heard. So well done. Um, so everything we've talked about so far is at the individual chip level, but we don't, we don't, in many cases, we sell those chips assembled into a module, into a DIM. Um, are there also changes at that level? There, there will be. Um, you know, the two that are top of mind are on DDR5, um, we now have two independent channels per module. And, and what this does is it, it allows for improved concurrency and more efficient scheduling from the controller. Uh, to do this though, the channels will be half the width. Um, and this is where the burst lead 16 um, becomes important again, because to maintain that 64 byte access per, per sub channel or, or independent channel, you need that burst link 16. Um, it's also important to call out that these, these independent channels still support multiple ranks on the channel. Got it. And when you're talking yeah, about width, you're talking about the fact that DDR is a parallel interface. So there's only so many wires between the DIM and the, the CPU. Is that right? Correct. So the, the modules from a data per perspective are still a by 64 interface. Uh, and more, I guess a, a more simple way to think about this is a DDR5, mm -hmm. you'll have these narrower channels that are burst length 16 to maintain the 64 bytes. But on one of these, you could be doing a write while the other is doing a read. So you're, you're essentially turning what we would view as an eight channel DDR4 system today into a 16 channel system. Got it. That's very clever. There's a, there's a continuing theme here of adding, adding flexibility to the data access paths and finding ways to hide the, 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 the downtime, the essential downtime that's within a DRAM. This is kind of amazing. I think there's one other thing at the, at the DIM level, right? To do with power management that you wanted to mention. Yeah, the, the other thing I was gonna bring up is the power management circuit is now moved from the motherboard to the actual module. Uh, moving this power management closer to the, to the actual DRAM is beneficial. As you know, we won't want to continue to hit these higher data rates. Uh, just better power regulation and delivery is critical to be able to make that happen. Got it. So going back to something you said earlier, why multi-core process is more challenging? So when we, when we look at the challenge, we're looking at it from a bandwidth perspective. Um, as, as core counts and CPUs continue to grow to enable the year-over-year -year performance gains, the, the bandwidth per core is actually going down. Oh so as, as we've seen systems evolve from 24 cores to 32 cores, 64 cores, DDR4 is maxed out at 3,200 data rate. So if you're expecting X amount of bandwidth at 64 cores. Um, if you want to grow beyond that, you need a DRAM that can provide more bandwidth. Got it. That makes perfect sense. And so when you add all of this together, what's the effect? So when we put it all together, you know, we've at Micron, we've looked at it from a simulation perspective. Um, so what we tried to do was compare, well, we wanted to start by comparing DDR4 and DDR5 at a like frequency at 3,200 data rates. And then, you know, we, we took the next step and said, what will it look like when we introduce this to the market, which is about 4,800 megatransfers per second. So what we did was we did simulations at, across a by 64 interface, 64 um, byte random accesses, 66% reads, and we enabled the same bank refresh um, that we discussed earlier to maximize performance. Um, really, really focusing on, on RDIMs and data centers for the simulation. But when, what we saw was when we compared DDR4 to DDR5 at 3,200, we saw a 1.36x performance gain. And this is, this is mainly driven by you know, the banks, the bank groups, the same bank refresh. It really shows how more efficient we made DDR5 when compared to DDR4. Uh, but when you compare DDR5 4,800 to 3,200, we see a 1.87x performance improvement, almost 2x. Um, you know, as we continue, the DDR5 ecosystem continues to evolve and we continue to get systems in our labs. I'm, I'm really excited to see how these simulations correlate um, to actual workloads we're able to run in our lab. And also excited to see as we continue to work with our customers to make sure, you know, these numbers that we simulated continue to correlate. 
That's so that that's a real that's a real proof point to the fact that you're not just running this thing faster, you're also running it smarter. Um, so that that's terrific. And so speaking of customers, where are we going to see DDR5 first and when? So we're sampling DDR5 to customers now. Um, we actually started um, sampling our first 1Z nanometer technology DRAM modules uh, back in 20, January of 2020. Um, you know, again, I, I just want to reiterate how, how exciting it is to be involved in this new technology and to see it evolve over time. But with that said, I mean, I, we, we expect to see the first servers deployed in, in data centers and servers uh, probably starting in late 2021 and, and maybe ramping into 2022 timeframe. Um, and, and going a step further, we should also expect to see PC-based platforms as well, um, maybe more focused on high, higher end gaming systems or gaming systems, uh, probably in the same, same general timeframe. Excellent, everyone wants a piece of DDR5. So just to finish off, Brian, what's next for you? So, you, you know, for me, it's business as usual. Uh, we'll continue to support customers even on our legacy technologies such as DDR4 and, and continue to enable DDR5. Um, but, but beyond that, we're, we're always interested in talking to our customers about, about what's next, what, what, what's after DDR5, what, what can we do to increase the workloads or to increase, uh, to help data centers be more efficient or to use their data better. Um, how, how do we continue to tip the scale and, and develop the next leading edge technology? Um, I think the one thing I really want to call out is, is that, you know, many people think that just because DDR5 hasn't ramped and hasn't really, um, is not the volume runner in data centers today, that talking about new technologies hasn't started yet, started yet. But it's really important to say that it has. And we really want to make sure the voices of our customers are heard, and how do we, how do we provide that feedback into the definition of of the next technology? Excellent. How cool is it that that business as usual is pushing the envelope, pushing and pushing the envelope? That's excellent. Brian, thanks so much for joining me. This has been really interesting, and um, DDR5 everywhere soon. Thanks for having me. Mm -hmm.